All right, welcome back to Salt City Counseling, everybody. Once again, my name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. It must be Sunday. Here's your next nar healing narcissistic trauma video. Um, kind of doing two at once, so that I'll have one to publish easy peasy next Sunday. So, uh, so I won't have to do one next week. So, in this video, in this one, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about how to change your view of the narcissist. If you can change how you view this person, if you can change uh, the type of role that they play for you mentally, you're going to help break this up and you're going to help, it's going to help you overcome, right? Because the thing is, is that narcissists use very, very specific and effective ta tactics and techniques to manipulate us and, and, uh, and to, to brainwash us sometimes, right? And those, and I've talked about this all the time. Those techniques include primarily anger and fear, but also like putting you down, put downs, making themselves look, look superior, making you look small. It's so crazy, by the way, how like, you know, it's really bizarre. There are a lot of bizarre things about human behavior that I cannot explain. And one of them is, is that certain people or certain types of people adopt behaviors like, holy crap, like to a T. It's almost like they, they have a meeting. It's almost like there's narcissists anonymous on, on how to be more effective narcissists because their tactics are like on point like like all of them almost right you just use these same tactics so bizarre i can't explain it it's super weird but but if you can change how you view the narcissist or the narcissistic type it, it, it can be very very effective about how you start making your own decisions and how you start making decisions for your own thinking in your own mind so I'm going to talk about the narcissist or, or the narcissistic type and what's going on with them so that maybe you can start viewing them in a different light. I'm going to tell you how I view narcissists, how I've talked about how I deal with narcissists and, and how effective it has been for me. Like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm an absolute pro at A, spotting these folks and B, dealing with them. Um, and, and the trick is, honestly, it, like if you're not afraid of them, you have won 90% of the battle, 90 freaking percent. They know, they can tell when you're afraid of them and they are opportunistic. Uh, they can tell when you're not afraid of them and they, and they cower, they fold like lawn chairs. And the truth of the matter is, is narcissists, they're actually like very, very small. They're not strong, they're, they're small. Um, they, and they feel scary, they feel strong, they feel powerful. This is true for borderline, by the way, too. They feel strong, they feel powerful, they feel scary, they feel dominant, and all those things. It's all an illusion. It's, it's like the Wizard of Oz. I've used this metaphor for years, and it's just as true today as it always was. Uh, with Like, if you watch the Wizard of Oz, right, Dorothy and all of her friends, they go in, there's this big scary face with the loudspeakers and the flamethrowers, and, ah, and and he does that on purpose to scare people so that so that he can so that he can manipulate them and and when the truth of the matter is is that he's small and weak right and that is just so true for for narcissists so i'm going to get into a little bit more to to how you can start thinking about them differently um and how that's going to be hopefully helpful to you uh, but first let me get my housekeeping out of the way if you're new here man i hope that you will subscribe like uh, also help me grow my channel like share subscribe Notification, you know what to do. Comment below. You can ask me viewer questions. I love viewer questions. You can put them in the comment section below. You can send me an email, scottc at saltcitycounseling.com. If you really like my content, then please hit the tip jar, man. Cash app, Venmo, PayPal, all those links are in the description below. It will help me keep content like this going for you. So let, let's talk about the narcissist. Now, once upon a time, Whoever this narcissist in your life is, maybe it's maybe it's a spouse, maybe it's an ex-spouse, maybe it's a parent. Um, once upon a time, they were young, and they were they were probably kind. They probably had a good heart. They probably had a kind heart, um, and and that there was almost like a diversion in the road of their life. And at some point, right, they had they had they had an option, and they were feeling they were probably feeling scared. They were probably feeling weak. They were probably feeling extreme hurt, extreme pain. I mean, extreme pain, a rejection. They probably felt rejected by the parent, by a parent, for example. Uh, they probably felt like uh, their parent hated them, 
and thought they were awful or whatever, right? And they were in so much pain, right? That in, in a sense, they had a choice. They didn't realize they, they had a choice necessarily. But they could have either gone down road A, which was where they could find a way to cope, find a way to overcome, find a way to adapt. And maybe in an alternate uh, reality, there's a version of them that, it's ha- that is happy and healthy and okay, right? And kind and, and patient and, and loving in, in some regards. Uh, or road B is the road that they went down. Road B is the dark road, the road where they refuse to, to be vulnerable, where they only thought about me, 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 and they, and that, that the tra- they have trauma. And, and try, to, try to remember this. The narcissistic type, they have trauma, guaranteed. Now, the specific narcissistic personality disorder, you won't see it. You won't know about it. Or, or you likely won't. Um, they stuff it. They don't. They won't show it to you. You won't see it. Borderline, on the other hand, they will. You will see. You will see their trauma. They wear it on their sleeve sometimes. Um, it's it's often uh, uh, a very very like a singular event. You can pinpoint it. Uh, but they had a choice too, right? There was that choice. There was that divergent in the road. And when that that nasty voice showed up in their own head, and and they started listening to it, and then it got worse and worse and worse. And they trusted it more, and they trusted it more, and they and that's they lost their touch with reality. Okay, now try to keep in mind that 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 point of trauma, that divergent in the road, uh, that's usually where they are stuck. Their their um, emotional and mental development is arrested at that point in their life. Maybe it's usually probably around like 10, 11 years old ish, because um, that's that's usually when the ego starts manifesting. That's usually when the ego starts knocking on the door, be like, hey. I'm the new friend that's going to be living in your head um, for the rest of your life. So you got to um, live with, deal with, right? Um, but for them, right, they are probably mentally, emotionally, and psychologically stuck, uh, developmentally arrested in that, in that place. And that, that lost, scared, hurt child is still in them. And the way that they hide it, the way that they deal with it is a lot of that anger and that fear and that dominance. Especially, again, with the narcissist, there's a lot of that dominance. I see with borderline that it just kind of comes and goes. Sometimes they're, they're almost begging for some kind of help. Narcissists will never do that. They will never allow themselves to be vulnerable enough. Uh, it's like a frantic fear of vulnerability. So, so instead of seeing like this scary, awful person, what, what I'm hoping will help is... To see them as this lost, scared child, this hurt child in an adult body that doesn't know how to connect, that doesn't know how to cope, that is that is only that's dealing with their own their own trauma in really, really uh, very destructive or, or negative ways, and that is by creating fear and dominance and and through the use of anger and this dominance through other people and brainwashing them. Um, it is it, that's how they avoid that sense of vulnerability. If I can. If I can destroy and decimate you, right, then I feel less vulnerable. Is kind of where they're coming from, right? And whereas people tend to look at narcissists as like strong and big and powerful and like, oh, look how big and it's a show, man. It's a dog and pony show. It's a it's an unhealthy coping mechanism. It's an unhealthy defense mechanism. They developed that over time to hide that scared child, just like the Wizard of Oz, man. So they developed that. They're like, oh, you know what I need? I need some big loud speakers and like. Something to create a hologram, this big giant green head. Let's throw in some flamethrowers for good measure, just to keep people scared when they're the ones that are actually really scared. And that's why it's so effective, at least for me, that when they when I encounter these folks and they attempt to dominate me or they attempt to do whatever, um, and I'm like, and I show them that I'm not afraid of them, and it's and the charade, the charade has completely failed. They got nothing nothing and so if you can see them as that small weak person if you can see them as just that uh because because again it's like and i even had this interesting thing happen in uh for me where where it was like someone said that i was afraid of of them because they were strong or whatever and it's like when they when this person is like talks behind people's back and and uses that fear and uses it's kind of narcissistic honestly uh, but 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 again, this example that I have where they will attempt to portray themselves as big and strong. Strong people don't don't talk bad about you behind the back, behind your back. Strong people don't blindly accuse you of things. Strong people don't try to try to control you. 
Those are all characteristics of weak people. So if you can learn <clears throat> to see this, this narcissistic type is just weak and sad. Because they are, they're sad. A lot of them will die alone. Honestly, like, sometimes I talk to young people that have borderline personality disorder. And I'm like, almost begging them, please, work hard, overcome this. Please, I'm begging you. Because, like, you must, must dedicate yourself to this. Because the future is bleak, man, for a lot of these folks, right? But for a narcissist, like, for, for people with narcissistic personality disorder, you see these awful malignant narcissists when they die? People are happy when they die. Is that sad, man? So, so like, like, see them as small and sad and pathetic that way. Like, when you die, people will have a party. And that's sad. And then, hopefully, that will start releasing the the hold onto you. <clears throat> All right. That's going to do it for this one. Where's my mouse? Hang in there, everybody. Hope you're doing good. See you in the next one.